Hi, I'm Mark with Best of Us Investors. I've been investing for over 40 years and would like to share some of my insight with you today. I'm not here to tell you what to invest in, but to provide you with some information that may help you become a better investor. Please hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you appreciate this content. Remember, this is for educational purposes only and is not financial advice. Okay, so let's get started. Around February of each year, the financial world eagerly looks forward to, and with great anticipation, the Berkshire Hathaway Annual Report and Associated Letter to the Shareholders penned by Warren Buffett himself. In less than 15 pages, Warren has the ability to cut through the piles of data contained in the company's 10K and turn that information into common sense overview of the company's holdings, its earnings, cash positions, and just a general view of the economy. This, of course, is really the kickoff to the biggest event among publicly traded companies, which is, of course, the Berkshire Hathaway Annual Shareholders Meeting held the first week of May in Omaha, Nebraska. As a native Nebraskan, I've had the opportunity to attend several of these meetings. I would encourage every shareholder to attend what has been called Woodstock for Capitalists at least once in your lifetime. In case you don't know what Woodstock is, it was a music and art festival held on a farm in upstate New York in 1969. The estimated attendance was approximately 400,000 people. This is a picture of the opening concert. If this were a picture of the Berkshire shareholder meeting, this would be Warren Buffett right here. Omaha has hosted tens of thousands of note-taking investors from around the world. This three-day event should be on everyone's bucket list. In a time of crazy markets, inflation, Fed speak, YouTube stock hype, and global uncertainties, I found Warren Buffett's shareholder letter to be a calming literary piece full of wisdom and common sense. In this video, we're going to skim through Buffett's shareholder letter to highlight how the views of the simple Midwesterner can be adopted by an ordinary investor. Warren starts his letter with a simple message. Charlie Munger and I have the job of managing a portion of your savings. We are honored by your trust. Think about that opening statement. I've looked at several hundred annual reports, and none of them started out with a statement thanking the shareholders. Warren continues, Our policy is to treat all shareholders equally. Therefore, we do not hold discussions with analysts or large institutions. In fact, Berkshire almost always releases all important com communications like financial results on Saturday mornings. This allows time for shareholders to absorb the news before markets open on Monday morning. Warren then continues with a section called, What You Own. Again, he's focused on you, the shareholder. He explains that Berkshire owns a wide variety of businesses, some in their entirety and some only in part, consisting of marketable common stocks of major American companies. In either case, the goal is to have meaningful investment in businesses with both durable economic advantages and a first-class CEO. Warren writes, we own stocks based on our expectations about their long-term business performance and not because we view them as vehicles for timely market moves. Charlie and I are not stock pickers. We are business pickers. I guess that's why we don't see daily buy and sell information from Berkshire Hathaway. However, Buffett does extrapolate a bit when talking about investing in common stocks, stating, it's far easier to exit from a mistake when it has been made in the marketable arena even Buffett admits he makes mistakes, of which, is, of which it is better to get out of a stock than to hold it forever. The next session of his letter is surprise, surprise. I classify this as a more of a did you know part of the letter. First, Buffett announces that Berkshire owns and operates more U.S.-based infrastructure assets classified on the balance sheet as property, plant, and equipment than are owned, by, owned and operated by any other American corporation. These assets total $158 billion. Secondly, Buffett wanted to set the record straight on the amount of taxes paid by the company. This is probably derived by a certain politicians continuously claiming corporations don't pay any taxes. Warren writes, Every year, your company makes substantial tax payments. In 2021, for example, we paid $3.3 billion, while the U.S. Treasury reported total corporate income tax receipts of $402 billion. This must be kind of a sore subject for Warren as he goes into more history about Berkshire Hathaway. In 1955, Berkshire Fine Spinning and Hathaway Manufacturing agreed to merge their businesses. 
Shareholders were assured that the combination of the resources and managements would result in one of the most strongest and most efficient organizations in the textile industry, and the company's advisor, Lehman Brothers, agreed. Buffett continues, In the nine years following the merger, Berkshire owners watched the company's net worth crater from $51.4 million to $22.1 million. Then Buffett writes that something that indicates to me why he may not like extending dividends to shareholders. In part, this decline was caused by stock repurchases, ill-advised dividends, and plant shutdowns. In order to expand on his belief that strong American companies benefit America, Buffett explains that in the nine post-merger years, the company only paid the government $337,000 in income taxes, a pathetic $100 a day. He went on to explain that in 1965, New management was installed, and the company started to prosper. Not only did the shareholders benefit, but so did our silent partner, the U.S. Treasury. Now Berkshire pays roughly $9 million per day to the U.S. Treasury. The next section of the letter addresses the four giants, which account for a very large chunk of Berkshire's value. Number one is the insurance business. In 1967, Berkshire purchased national indemnity for $8.6 million dollars. With this purchase, Berkshire found the money engine to fund its future investments. Berkshire became the world leader in insurance float. This is money they hold and can invest, but it does not belong to them. Basically, insurance premiums, Berkshire's total float, has grown from $19 million when they entered the insurance business to $147 billion. Buffett writes, To my surprise, our float increased $9 billion last year, a buildup of value that's important to Berkshire owners though it is not reflected in the GAAP presentation of earnings and net worth. Buffett is not a fan of non-GAAP earnings reporting, and neither am I. Number two is Apple. Berkshire's ownership of Apple is a mere 5.5%, up from 5.3% a year earlier. Buffett points out that only dividends from Apple are counted in the GAAP earnings, of which Berkshire received $785 million last year. Yet Berkshire's share of Apple's earnings amounted to $5.6 billion, Much of this was used by Apple to repurchase Apple shares. Number three is Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Buffett writes, Your railroad had record earnings of $6 billion in 2021. He calls them old-fashioned earnings, a figure calculated after interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, and all forms of compensations, i.e. stock-based compensation. Number four core holding is Berkshire Hathaway Energy. Berkshire Hathaway Energy earned a record $4 billion in 2021. That's up more than 30-fold from the $122 million earned in 2000. Berkshire owns 91.1% of the company. Berkshire Hathaway Energy has become a utility powerhouse and a leading force in wind and solar and transmission of energy throughout much of the United States. Next, Buffett talks about Berkshire's investments that they don't control, basically common stocks. Berkshire's top 15 stocks and ownership percentage of these companies include American Express at 19.9%, Apple Inc. 5.6%, Bank of America 12.8%, Bank of New York Mellon 8.3%, BYD 7.7%, this is owned through Berkshire Hathaway Energy, Charter Communications 2.2%, Chevron Corporation 2%, Coca-Cola Company, 9.2%, General Motors, 3.6%, Hitochu Corporation, 5.6%, Mitsubishi, 5.5%, Mitsui, 5.7%, Moody's Corporation, 13.3%, U.S. Bank Corp., 9.7%, and the only company that hasn't made any money as far as share price since they bought it is Verizon at 3.8%. Warren Buffett's favorite holding kind is about forever. These 15 holdings were worth a combined $311 billion at the end of 2021. This is quadruple of the total cost basis of $78 billion. Berkshire has racked up $233 billion in unrealized gains from these 15 holdings. Next, Buffett addresses cash. Berkshire's balance sheet includes $144 billion of cash and cash equivalents. $120 $120 billion is held in short-term treasury bills. This stake has Berkshire financing about one-half of 1% of the publicly held U.S. national debt. 
Berkshire will always hold more than $30 billion of cash, according to Buffett. He wants to make sure your company is financially impregnable and never dependent on the kindness of strangers. Why $144 billion? Buffett states, It's the consequence of my failure to find, the entire, to find entire companies or small portions thereof, which meet our criteria for long-term holding. So how does Buffett increase the value of your investments? Number one, increase the long-term earning power of Berkshire's controlled businesses through internal growth or acquisitions. Number two, buy non-controlling interest in the many good or great businesses that are publicly traded. Buffett says today, they find little to get excited about, but why is that? Long-term interest rates that are low push the prices of all productive investments upward. Whether these are stocks, apartments, farms, oil wells, whatever. Other factors influence valuation as well, but interest rates will always be important. So with rising interest rates, will Berkshire find more favorable investments? Most likely, and at much lower prices. The final path to value creation is repurchasing Berkshire's shares. Through that simple act, they increased your share of many businesses Berkshire owns. During the past two years, Buffett repurchased 9% of the outstanding shares at year end, 2019 for a total cost of $51.7 billion. Buffett writes, The expenditure left our continuing shareholders owning about 10% more of all Berkshire businesses. As of February 23, 2022, we repurchased an additional shares at a cost of $1.2 billion. Buffett ends his letter as he began, thanking the shareholders. What better way to end this video than with the words of Warren Buffett himself? There is nothing more rewarding to Charlie and me than enjoying the trust of individual long-term shareholders who for many decades have joined us with the expectation that we would be a reliable custodian of their funds. To a truly unusual degree, Berkshire has, as owners, a very large core of individuals and families that have elected to join us with an intent approaching till death do us part. Often they have trusted us with a large, some might say excessive portion of their savings. Berkshire, those shareholders would sometimes acknowledge, might be far from the best selection they could have made, but they would add that Berkshire would rank high among those with which they would most be comfortable in investing in. And people who are comfortable with their investments will, on average, achieve better results than those who are motivated by ever-changing headlines, chatters, and promises. As a long-term Berkshire Hathaway shareholder, I couldn't have said it better. For me, Berkshire Hathaway is America's greatest value stock, but it's more than a stock. It's a collection of companies owned in part or by whole by the owners of Berkshire stock with the purpose of growing and returning value to you, the owner. I've been an owner of Berkshire for a long, long time, and I feel like an owner, as do tens of thousands of others who will descend on Omaha in a few months. I know this stock is not for everyone, but in times of high interest rates and devaluation of many companies, there's probably no better time to consider an investment in this great company. Remember, always do your own due diligence prior to investing to make sure it fits within your time horizon and risk tolerance. Also, don't invest in something based on hope. Hope is not a strategy. Know what you own. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Thanks and see you next week.